The unit we're getting into is all about quadratics. Now we spent a lot of time in Algebra 1, which again was either last year or two years ago for you, studying quadratics. Quadratics are the ones that make the U shape. So we're going to spend pretty much this entire quarter doing different things with quadratics. The first thing is graphing them and talking about all the attributes. We're going to then get into writing equations for them and then getting into solving them in various ways. That's kind of the breakdown of the whole quarter. We're all sticking with this topic. Now, this topic is generally pretty strong for you guys because Algebra 1, we like talked about it so much. Today, though, we're talking about just quadratic transformations. Does this look familiar to y'all? Yeah, we did this with absolute value equations, with the Vs. Now we're going to go back over all of this vocabulary with the Us and spend today just working with that vocabulary to kind of iron it back out in our head. Now, the first type of transformations that we're going to talk about are our vertical transformations. We had an acronym to potentially help us remember some things about those vertical transformations, and it was VOS. Vertical transformations always occur... Um, that should say outside. I'm so sorry. Please change this to say outside. That's embarrassing. That's a whole typo. Vertical outside and same, which means they go the same direction as you think. They're on the outside of the parent function, meaning they're not in parentheses. They're on the outside. So a vertical translation if you remember back to when we did this with absolute values, was just adding some number at the end. If you actually add that number, so plus k or plus 5, whatever you're adding, that's going to move the parabola, the shape, the u, up. It's going to take the vertex, which is the bottom of the graph, and bloop, move it up. If you subtract some number k, it's going to move it down, which makes sense because up is plus and down is minus. So in this example we have, we just wanted to sketch the graph of x squared minus 5. So if we look at this, we have the dashed parent function, which always goes through the origin. That's its vertex. And all we did was take that vertex and boop, move it down how many? 5. So if, we just, if you want to highlight these so you can kind of see what's happening, that might be a good thing to do for your notes. Just to see that boop, it's moved down 5 because we said minus 5. If we had said plus 5, it would have went up 5. It would have went up 5. Very good. So vertical translations are numbers added and subtracted behind the little square. Okay. Now the second transformation we're going to talk about that occurs vertically is called a reflection over the x-axis. Specifically over the x because we will reflect it over the y later. This happens when you make the parabola sad. When you make the equation sad, it's going to flip over the x-axis. Your vertex stays exactly the same, right? The vertex didn't move, but when we just put that little negative in the front, it goes from a happy parabola to a sad parabola. That's a reflection in the x-axis. So sad equations, negative equations, make negative parabolas or sad parabolas. The other two vertical transformations are our vertical stretches and vertical shrinks. Now, these are a little bit confusing because do you see how the letter that we're going to change, it is outside, but it's in the same location for both vertical stretches and vertical shrinks. The thing that makes it be different is the type of number you are multiplying by. If that A value is a whole number, like 5 or 10 or 15, it's going to get narrower. Like here, we multiplied by 2. That's a whole number. So this graph got narrower than the parent function. You see how it's like inside of it? That's narrower, skinnier. If, on the other hand, that number we're multiplying in front is some sort of proper fraction, meaning 1 half, 1 fifth, 1 tenth, 3 fourths, where the number on bottom is bigger, like a half, it's going to get wider than the parent function. And that's how we tell the difference between stretches and shrinks. Vertical stretches get narrower, vertical shrinks get wider. And the difference is the type of number you're multiplying by. A whole number makes it skinnier, a fraction makes it wider. Same thing happened when we did this with absolute values, but it's just sometimes easier to see in different functions. This is a parabola or a u compared to the v of absolute values. 
Now those are the first four transformations, technically five if we go up and down. The other five are on your other piece of paper. These are all the horizontal transformations. The horizontal acronym we're going to use is HIO, which stands for horizontal transformations are inside parentheses, inside the function, and they go the opposite direction. Do you notice right away that all of the formulas on this page, you see how there are now parentheses with all of them? That's your indication that we're doing something horizontally. If parentheses appear, you're doing something horizontally. So if I ask you to do something horizontally, you've got to put parentheses there. What do you notice about these parentheses, though? I want you to notice this. What do you, where is the exponent? Is it inside? Outside. That exponent always needs to be squaring the parentheses. So you make sure when you write them later that you also do that. Okay? If we want to horizontally translate something, which just means move it to the left and the right, all we're going to have to do is add or subtract some number inside parentheses. But since this is horizontal, it's going to go the opposite way than we think. All right, it's going to move to the right if you are subtracting some number, which is the opposite of what you think. Subtracting is usually going to the left, but since it's on the inside, it goes the opposite. And it's going to move to the left if you have plus some number in there. So minuses moves to the right, pluses move to the left. Just like it shows you in our example here, it says minus 5 on the inside. So my parabola, all it did was take the vertex and scoot it to the right five units. So we took that bottom point, that vertex, and we just bloop, scooted it over. Another transformation we can do, since it's inside, is the opposite. This one's over the y-axis when we make that negative on the inside. It's not going to flip over the x-axis and make a sad parabola. It's going to flip over the y-axis. But because quadratics are what are called even functions, it's not actually going to change anything about the shape because we flipped it over its vertical um, axis of symmetry, so it doesn't really change anything to do th this one. So that one's kind of boring, not going to lie. That's a boring transformation for this type of graph. They get more interesting as we work with odd functions later on this year. The last two are our horizontal stretches and shrinks, but these are the opposite of what they were for vertical. The number we are multiplying by for both these types of transformations is inside those parentheses. That's how we know it's different. If that number b is a proper fraction, meaning like a half, you see how we're multiplying by a half inside? It's still going to make the graph wider, but that's called a horizontal stretch, which is the opposite vocabulary from vertical. And if that number we see inside the parentheses is a whole number, like 2, it's going to make it narrower, but it's called a shrink, which is backwards. So the horizontal stretches and shrinks, kind of confusing because the vocabulary doesn't match vertical. It's the opposite vocabulary. But a proper fraction, either inside or outside, does make the graph wider. It's just called something different, which is very interesting. So you now have these two pieces of paper with all of the information on how to write these transformations. That's going to be the first column. If you want to write one, you're going to use these patterns here. And what it will look like on a graph, which is going to be here with some details in the middle. We're going to use these two charts and what we know about transformations already from doing the whole like, you know, stained glass mirror project and the other things we've done this year so far to do the activity that is on Google Classroom. <laughs>